This is what you're paying for. Get out of my way. It's all part of the menu. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yes, we are. Yeah. I want to go ahead and I want to move on to my review, my non-spoiler review for the menu chat, which came out a couple of weeks ago. And I know I'm a little behind with this chat. You no, know, it came out about what, like mid, late uh, November chat. But I wanted to talk about it because I have finally seen it. And it was this movie that all my critic friends and uh, my viewers and my friends were talking about saying how how fantastic it was. It was one of the best movies of the year. I was like, well, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't say, Chad. You know? But for those that don't know, kind of like the general premise of, of this film, of this thriller, I kind of categorize it as a thriller, Chad. Well, people have interpreted it in different ways, which is interesting to me. But you know, the, the film uh, focuses on this group of um, diners, Chad, these very rich, influential uh, diners at a very exclusive restaurant who discover that this celebrity sh uh, chef played by uh, Ray Fiennes, or as I call him, Ralph Fiennes, Chad. His mom named him Ralph. I'm going to call him Ralph, but we'll call him Ray just for the, the sake of convenience. Ray Fiennes, who intends to kill them all. Uh, before the night is out, and it's uh, it's directed by uh, uh, Mark Mylod, Mylod, I believe that's how you say his name, who's probably best known for his work on uh, Shameless and you know in Succession, and you know I gotta say, Chet, you know, uh, because of that, and that past work along with uh, screenwriters uh, Seth Seth Reese and, and Will Tracy, uh, they have given us such a perfectly tension filled thriller. And uh, an examination on the idea of obsession and, and, and what it does to, you know, individuals. What's so kind of cool about this movie, like, you know, going in, like, when you see the marketing, like, I thought it was effective. Because, like, okay, one thing I, I get the sense from this movie, just from based on the marketing itself, is that this is going to be a movie about escalation. The escalation of, of, of tension. Because clearly it's like, okay, why are all these people here? What is the big deal with this you know, celebrity chef played by uh, uh, Ralph Fiennes? The, the character that Ralph Fiennes plays is uh, Julian Slowick. Um, and like all these specific donors, all star fucking cast. Yeah. I mean, you got, you have Anna Taylor joy, you have Nicholas Holt, you have John Leguizamo, you have, uh, uh J J Jenna McTeer. It's like, okay. And they all seem to come from different walks of life, but they're all wealthy and they all have their various issues. Chad, they all have their various secrets. And it's like, are these going to be revealed throughout the, you know, the, the, the course of, of the movie? And they are, which was so cool about the movie is that they are, and, and they're done in, in a way that does not feel overwhelming. And at the same time, they're perfectly layering this escalation of tension. Like, this is the kind of movie where it, it reminds me of, um, I don't know, a more concise Tarantino. Like, Tarantino is an expert at uh, uh, dialogue and making uh, that dialogue in itself tense between two or, or, or more characters. And there's, there's a number of, uh, of examples. But whereas, like, I feel like, you know, with something like Tarantino where he's become kind of less focused over, uh, over time or kind of get lost in his own nostalgia and various you know, weird, uh, eclectic, uh, uh, obsessions. Like this movie is, is, is very focused on, we're going to keep revealing little by little by little what's going on. And this, and this, uh, general mystery. I think it does a great job of kind of the setup and the setting where we follow this, you know, all these characters who are in, in a variety of ways, maybe the exception of Anna Taylor joy, as kind of uh, unlikable, despicable, kind of the worst of all their various industries, whether it be food critics, whether it be actors, you know, whether it be, you know, the, the various higher ups of um, these businesses and, and corporations all going to this, 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 this one place. Uh, I, I just love how when they finally get to this, this island, which is, you know, this island is home to this fucking restaurant. You can't leave it, <laughs> which already would kind of be like, that's kind of a big, you know, uh, uh, red flag for me. It's like, okay, we're going to this island. There's only one fucking way out of here. It's this boat, which just left and just dropped us off. But then these people are these hoity-toity people. They're so obsessed with their own goddamn lives. They're not thinking, Chad. All they know is like, we're just going to eat some goddamn good food. But I love how... Initially in the movie, they set up. But by the way, the one actress I don't feel like is getting any credit for their for her role, Hun Chow, is that how you say her name? Is Elsa, who is the the uh, Ray Fiennes' is Mater D in the movie. She's great. You probably last saw her in uh, the Watchmen HBO TV series. 
she, well, I don't want to say what, what exactly what her role is, but she kind of plays an Ozzy Mandy SS character. She is really good in this movie, chat. But I love in this initial opening because, you, know, we, we, you know, for the most part, we follow Anna Taylor Joy, who is with Nichols Holt, who is this fucking foodie who's obsessed with the idea of, of people making food and what it means and being all uh, obnoxious about it. But we kind of, for the first part of the film, initially kind of get what, what life is like on this island, like how all these chefs underneath Ray Fines do their things. And it almost feels like a cult. It's It feels like these people are like under control. Like we go to their, their facilities and how they all kind of share just one domicile together, with the exception of the chef, with the exception of Ray Fines. We see how they prepare all the food. Like all the food is made on the island itself, chat. Everything from the, the, the plants, the, 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 the animals, to the goddamn barnacles and seaweed and shit, to the, to the gels they're serving people. It's like, okay, they do a great job of establishing what this little microcosm of this world is. Right. And, it, and it's very effective. It just feels very controlled. And it's like, okay, we are obsessed with this. They're obsessed with this idea of control. And we, and we go and we go forward with it. And so the setting is, is fantastic. It's kind of got this kind of like clean, aesthetic, sterile, despite like, you know, food. We think of like, oh, food is, food is wholesome. It's, it, it's warmth. It's made of love. It's like this environment has, has just like a distinct absent, absence of wholesomeness, of, of, of love and care. It's just, it's just, it's like, ah, oh, it kind of feels alien. It kind of feels foreign. And I like that. Like, the setting already is, is, is ominous and, and dark, which is really, really cool. And I love how, like, the structure for the movie is also based on the structure of the meals. Like, each specific meal represents something that the characters, specific, specifically with uh, Ray Fiennes, um, you know, has gone through in his life and how he's feeling. And I thought that was really cool. And they have like these whole text cards that pop up and what the meal is comprised of and like what, what it's about. And like, we get this whole meal, which is based on like all the foods of the island. Yeah. We're literally, it's like a giant fucking rock and you got some, uh, like some seafood and some seaweed and everything like that. But it's like, oh, okay, this is what you're consuming. But then throughout the movie, it's like, okay, it's kind of like, kind of weird and hoity-toity and, and, and maybe a little pretentious. But it's like, okay, but it looks good. That's the other thing about this movie. The food looks fucking great. And I, and, I, and I do love it for that. But then as we keep going throughout the film, the meals become weirder. And when the meals become weirder, chat, the characters become weirder and more exaggerated and more violent, viciously uh, violent, chat. And you have other characters which are just like, completely like, they want to get out of there. They don't understand what's happening, especially with Anna Taylor Joe, who's very much the audience avatar. And she's kind of viewed by Ray Fiennes and a lot of the other uh, chefs and even diners as like the outsider. There's mysteries to who she actually is and what the role she plays in this. And, and Ray Fiennes has this obsession over her, much like he has an obsession over these meals. This this presentation, his final, his final meal and presentation for all these, um, all these uh, uh, diners. Uh, and then throughout the rest of the movie, Chad, it's like this, it's this, these specific characters that we're following, but by the way, the cast is fucking great. The cast is, 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 is great and what they all represent and how they're, you know, they're changing, how they're kind of, you know, uh, uh, facing their own demons and the sins that they've, they've committed. And it's not done all at once. And it feels like, like every single person in this movie, this is a big cast. There's a lot of people in this, and people that I haven't even mentioned who get all their various moments. And it's punctuated by, yes, that tension, uh, the, like, you know, fear, but also there's a lot of humor in this movie. Like, other, some people have like, said this is a straight-up horror film. I look at this as more of a thriller or more of, like, a dark comedy, a black comedy. So throw a punctuated by humor, and it's great because that kind of eases the tension, you know, because this is an anxiety-ridden uh, 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 ridden film. But... I like how what like what they reveal like each of these people like represent in their various fields and how they've kind of corrupted them over time. Like the idea of the critic, the critic who takes glee in tearing something down, the actor who does not care about their profession or the quality of their art, you know, or the businessman that takes advantage of their their friends and employees. It's kind of it's kind of looking at all of these things and how they didn't appreciate their positions in life and what they do and they're being punished for it in very unique ways you know it's and it's it's, it's in between all these scenes is this is consistent escalation of this tensions like what's going to happen next how deranged is ray fines his staff or even the dinner guests 
you know, uh, themselves. Like, Ray Fiennes, he delivers such a fantastic performance as as Chef Julian. Yes, Chef! I love how he starts. It, it, it's so, ooh, it, it's so creepy, chat. And it just comes like, oh, shit. It just grabs your attention. Like, every time he does this whole speech, presenting the next meal and everything, and then something, like, horrifying fucking happens. He always goes, boom. He always fucking claps his hands, chat. And, like, all the dinner guests just kind of panic. And, and, and I love that. His, 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 his mentality, this, this ritual that he follows is, is disturbing. He has this coldness to his, his, his character. Like, we learn more about him throughout the movie, why he is the way he is now. And this, this, like, this passion for his, his, his crafting of food is just completely gone. It's, like, dead. And he's become this kind of, like, emotionless being. It's a really good role. It's very, it's kind of reminiscent of, um, uh, of, like, Hannibal Lecter. He's kind of like a serial killer with, with, with food. Although it's not like cannibalism, nothing like that yet. It doesn't go in that direction. But he has that same kind of just like presence, that, that, that ominous presence that you're captivated, like you're, you're terrified of him because you don't know what he's, uh, he's going to do, but you're captivated by him because of the way he, in which he speaks and the way he tells a story. I really like that. And he connects that to his own, his own history, and he connects his history to his own food and what it means to the individuals he's serving in the room. I thought that's really, really good. Um, and then you have like the rest of the cast. You have the now. I mean, also uh, uh, Han Chao, who plays his is Mater D. She is just this effective, uh, ruthless administrator of the various chefs and and the guests, and she gets a number of great scenes. She's just. I think the thing is because you kind of you you underestimate her in the movie. You don't expect like the things that she does, and when she does them, it's like oh Jesus, it's it's, it's horrifying. So she's great. She's just this. this <laughs> This person in the background, this ominous presence constantly because you don't know what she's going to do. She's either going to cut cut you down with her words or she's going to cut you down with, well, the things at her, at her disposal, the instruments at her disposal, chap. Pretty good. And then you have the various diners. This is like huge. This is a huge fucking supporting cast. Anna Taylor-Joy, like I said, she's very much the, uh, the audience avatar. She is there. She's the companion to Nicholas Holt's character. And she's the one that's like, what the fuck is all this about? You know, she's the one that's is thinking is saying everything that we're thinking right now. This, you know, this, 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 pre this pretentious guy and his ridiculous meals and his speeches and his pontificating. Like, what is all this about? And, you know, Ray Fiennes and the staff kind of take, like, an interest in her. It's like, why is she here? Because apparently she's not supposed to be. It's like, ooh, that's, that's another mystery they kind of set up in, in the movie. She's the, she's the, you know, the fighter, the survivor, if you will, throughout this film. You have Nicholas Holt, and I think it was said earlier that Nicholas Holt's kind of going through a weird period of his career where he is playing nothing but, like, assholes. And he is so good at it, Chad, whether it be in something like The Favorite or more, more recently in that series where it's about Peter the Great, one of the rulers of Russia. He kills it as this character of Tyler who's just, he's a complete snoob, uh, 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 just a, like snobby foodie. And where he, all he is, he's obsessed with the idea of food. And there's this, all I'll say is, there is a scene in this movie that is, that is peak cringe, but in a good way. Because it revolves around his character. And it's so sad and pathetic when it happens. But you as the audience, based on everything you learn about him throughout the film, you take such fucking joy in it. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's great. Um, and then you have like John Leguizamo, who plays this uh, kind of former uh, actor and Hollywood action star who's trying to like kind of reform his career and wants to be like a, 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 a like you know a, has a, like a traveling show or be like a talk show something like that. And apparently, like John Leguizamo based his performance off of um, oh god uh, oh god I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the name all of a sudden uh, uh, the the shitty ponytail guy. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Under Siege. Give me a second here. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. He based his entire performance off of Steven Seagal. And you see that, chat. It, it really works. Shitty ponytail guy. No, not me, goddammit. <laughs> not me. The other one. Other than, other than me. Steven Seagal. And he's great. He's great. And even though like he is like a piece of shit, he has these moments where he is warm and he is wholesome. But he's, you know, he has this, this past where he screwed over a lot of people and where he's rude and he's been a goddamn liar. Kind of like Steven Seagal. <laughs> and then you have Jenna McTeer, who plays this ruthless, uh, pretentious food critic who takes joy in, in criticizing others and cutting 
uh, people down and, you know, inevitably destroying uh, businesses. You know, she has like a complicated past with um, Ray, uh, Ray Fiennes' character. She kind of made him who he is, but in a way, because she made him who he is, he regrets that and he's resentful over it because he's kind of like the monster we see uh, throughout the in- entire film. And there's there's plenty of other people. Some some people, you, you won't even recognize, um, you know, their their names in, in the movie chat. Uh, you also have, oh God, there's uh, uh, Amy... Uh, Carrero, who plays the uh, assistant to uh, John Leguizamo, she's great. I love their rapport. She, yeah, and you know, she's like, I'm just fucking sick of you. I want to leave you. I want to get out of here. I want to move on to other things. Like their whole back and forth is is wonderful throughout the uh, uh, movie. You also have uh, Paul Aldestein, who uh, plays uh, Janet McTeer's uh, Janet McTeer's assistant in the film, and he's like this. Just total, just piss on where he 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 always uh, is trying to uh, support her, or um, you know, he has no opinion of his own. He's only he's like, oh yes, yes, of course, of course, I uh, I would have recognized that. Yes, based on what you said, I see that now. He's like one of those guys, but he's very funny. Like everyone's like really really funny uh, in this movie. Like again, the film is punctuated by all these great humorous moments, but also you have some just horrifying sequences, chat, where people are hunted or things are cut off or, you know, people are set on fire. It's like, it's great. It's great. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of those movies. What Listen, I can tell you this much. You know, if you go on with the mindset, you're going to see a darkly comic thriller. I feel like you're going to enjoy it. They reveal more of a time of what, what's actually going on, why people are doing what they're doing. Um, but yeah, if you're, if, if you're not into dark black comedies, um, I don't think this is going to be for you. It is, it is a mean spirited movie. It's a nasty movie. I mean, yes, there is, there is humor, but it's the kind of humor where, you know, it's usually at the expense of a person. And if you struggle with that kind of thing, uh, this, this, this might not be for you. Um, you might be just kind of really uncomfortable, even turned off by it. But for me, who kind of went in like I, I figured I, I figured what what this type of movie was was going to be just by the, the, the by the trailer itself by the mystery how seemingly nasty and sarcastic the characters were, were how pretentious they were and I was like okay bad things are going to happen to bad people and that's kind of what happens in this movie and if you go in there with that mindset I, I do feel like you will like it uh, uh, quite a bit and so for, for myself Chad like if I were to give this like a rating on the double the scale I'd probably give this this is a nice solid full price Chad it's definitely one of the best. Uh, thrills of the year. Some people are calling this a horror film. I, I suppose. I mean, I guess so. You know, I, I never really looked at it as a, as a horror movie. It has horror elements. So, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it, it continues this fantastic year of, of horror chat that we've had in, in 2022. So, I, I recommend it. If you're a fan of thrillers and if you just want to see a movie where it just continuously ratchets up the tension and then punctuates it with a nice joke and then does something horrible right afterwards... I feel like you really like this movie. It's 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 smartly written. It's it's well directed and it's well performed. Chat, in my opinion, one of the one of the one of the best of the year. But that's my opinion. What about you guys? How did you feel about uh, the menu chat? Kind of one of the big uh, surprises of the year for myself. I didn't think I'd like it nearly this much. 